As I covered in my previous video, Darren Drozdov has passed away. His family has come out and stated it's due to natural causes. And during this 2007 shoot interview, he goes into great detail on exactly what went down in the match against D'Lo Brown with the running power bomb that left him paralyzed and wheelchair bound. Let's take a listen to the full details from Darren Drozdov himself, again from back in 2007. Now, I remember D'Lo came running out. Um, boom, he hit the ropes. We did a couple moves. And then finally, I ended up putting him in a corner, I remember. I went and came running into the corner. I remember he kicked me in the stomach. And two things that I look back on that were, you know, just minor things at the time, but I always wrestled with my nipple, all my piercings, tongue, nose, ears, nipple, always wrestled with all my rings in. And that night, for some reason, I took my nipple ring out. Didn't think, you know, it wasn't any big deal. And I also wore a baggy shirt that I had never worn before. It was like a uh, holy black, uh, like, sweatshirt almost. And anyway, so we go through, and he ends up kicking me in the stomach. He goes to, he was going to give me a running powerbomb, which he had done before. We had wrestled a bunch of matches before. And then with that, he went, he picked me up, and I remember going up, and I knew something wasn't right. And it just felt weird. I didn't go all the way up. And, and I just remember him moving, and I just remember going down. And I, I still remember hitting, and I heard two cracks. And I went, I don't know, I basically said, oh, fuck, I just broke my neck. And, you know, I was in shock, you know, of course, and I'm like, wow, and I, just thoughts are going through my mind. I knew I was in trouble. The ref came over. Uh, Teddy Long actually came over. He said, I guess Teddy just broke my neck. Uh, you know, and, of course, you know, they stopped it there. I remember Matt, come, you know, Albert kind of coming in. And I'm talking, I remember everything about it. Uh, you know, I remember people coming in, talking to me, you know, I was just like, you know, take your time, you know, do your thing. I, I knew I was screwed. I knew I was paralyzed, you know. I, I knew it was, I heard, when I heard, I heard crack, crack, and I knew right there, that's when I said that, I knew that I was paralyzed, and I, I couldn't move anything. You know, my head was to the side. And uh, actually, a little side note on that is when wrestling came, when I was in the hospital, or just when I, I think I was still in the hospital when I was getting out of the hospital. Wrestling had come back to Philly, and one of the papers up there, it was the day after Walter Payton had died, and instead of having something about him on the cover, they actually had wrestlings in town, such and such, and they had a picture of me laying in the ring, paralyzed. And I'm like, I, I was like, what's going on here, you know? You know, this guy just died, and there's a picture of me laying there, paralyzed in the ring, and I saw how I was laying, and my arms were back, and my head was to the side. And I knew I didn't know exactly how I was positioned, because, you know, I couldn't see, but, uh, so anyway, I was laying there, and I was talking to the guys, and they're getting the neck brace on me and everything like that, and, uh, you know, I knew my fiance was in the back, and she worked for the company, and, uh, you know, I was just thinking, you know, she just saw this, everybody saw this, on, you know, backstage, watching on camera. And they were taking me out, you know, I remember talking to the boys and, you know, they're just wishing me the best and things like that and seeing her and, uh, you know, then going to, luckily there was a, uh, it's a, like a trauma center within five, ten minutes in Nassau Coliseum and in a way I was lucky because, you know, if I would have been in some backwater town, who knows, you know, what, you know, if it could have been any worse, you know, it was pretty bad to begin with, but uh, I stayed there five or ten minutes where they got me there, I remember going in and being there, and, uh, you know, I remember them asking, you know, about my tongue ring, you know, how did I, just, I'm like, look, you just gotta kind of grab my tongue and unscrew the bottom and things like that, and they were talking to me, and I remember looking at the clock, and I got hurt on October 5th of 1999, and October 6th was my fiance's birthday, she was set to go home and all that stuff, I remember laying there, and I looked at the clock, and it said, like, 12.15, and I was like, ah, oh, it's my fiance's birthday. And I don't know where it just came out. I remember saying it to the doctors. And then after that, with everything that was going on, I guess, you know, they were drugging me up and things like that. You know, and uh, after that, I don't remember much for, I remember bits and pieces of being in, in the trauma center and things like that. But it was a while before I was really loose. And it took close to, I, don't, I can't even really remember, probably four, five, six, seven days. I don't even know. 
to really figure out what was going on, you know, and, uh, you know, the, you know, fig knowing for sure, you know, I was paralyzed in it. Now, now you, like you said before, you had no idea what went wrong? It just, no, just, we, something you know, was just off? It just, yeah, you know, something just fell off, and, you know, I, I talked to D-Lo about it, we talked to it after it, you know, right after, and, you know, times after that, and, you know, it just, it was something, you know, I just wasn't, Man, I don't know. I didn't, you know, I didn't go up all the way. Like I said, I had a baggy shirt on. I might have slipped down a little bit. Um, you know, I just, I just know. And then, you know, you know, I remember reading some stories that somebody threw something in the ring and he slipped on it, and uh, you know, things like that. And I'm, you know, of course, people aren't going to know exactly. Um, this, this will let people know exactly. You know, I talked to WWE a little bit before. You know what happened, but. You know, some people had heard that I slipped on something, things like that. But no, it just happened. It was, you know, I remember I said before when I broke one of the DOA brothers' nose, things happen in the ring. And, you know, I knew, you know, things like that could happen. And, you know, you know, Owen had passed away. Owen Hart had actually passed away six months before in an accident. And, you know, that was a real tough time for everybody. And then, you know, having that happen, and it just, something went wrong, whether... You know, I slipped down, I, whatever it was, you know, it was just something that happened in the ring. It wasn't anybody's fault, and, you know, it's still this day I feel that way. You know, that it, it just, it happened. And, you know, that's how it is. Now, let me ask you, that the, the initial paralysis that you had, the initial, um, that you, you had no movement whatsoever, except moving your head, was that... I, I could move my head, and really my arms, I, you know, I, I guess because of the initial shock, I wasn't... I don't believe I was able to really move them at the time. I mean, it was just, I guess, the shock to my body really is what, you know. Oh, that for extended amount of time that you had no No, at all? no, no. I actually, once, I guess, um, I was in there for, I was in the trauma center for like, I think, four, 10 to 14 days. Then they flew me to, uh, you know, into Philadelphia, McGee Rehab Center. And there I was able to move my, uh, you know, I was moving my arms, but... You know, it's just, I guess, from the the shock on the spinal cord, things like that, I wasn't able to move them as much. You know, but then as time came on, you know, I'm able to move them a lot. I, I have no feeling in my hands, uh, no use of my hands, actually. Uh, you know, I'm paralyzed from the chest down. Um, you know, I can use my arms, you know, shoulders, you know, I can move around, things like that. And, uh, you know, I'm able, to, I'm able to do things, you know, you know, I'm still able to do things with the injury, you know, work on computer, things like that type. And, uh... But yeah, I just, you know, like I said, it took a little while for me to be able to get the arms moving. You know, you and D'Lo, um, how did he feel? I mean, he, you know, he felt horrible. I mean, you know, he, I'm, I'm sure it was in his mind, maybe he wanted to blame himself. But as I said, you know, I, well, after it happened, you know, he's apologizing, apologizing. And, uh, you know, we talked and, you know, still apologizing. I said, look, man, I said, it's something that happened. I said, it could have happened to anybody. It happened to us. You know, there's nothing that you did wrong, nothing I did, it's just something that happened. And I, you know, I'm sure it was hard to, I'm sure his next match, next few bunch of matches were probably, a, probably pretty weird for him. But, uh, you know, I never had any hard feelings or ill will because, you know, I, you know, I knew the consequences and other things that happened, you know, throughout my career. I mean, you know, I had ribs broken, concussions, you know, hit with chairs, split open, things. Nothing to this, you know, magnitude, but it's something that happened in the ring, and it's part of it. You know, you know, people part talk about wrestling being really dangerous, and I mean, anything's dangerous. You know, I, I look at it this way: I could have, you know, tripped on a curb. There, you know, there was a person when I was in McGee who had tripped on a curb and fell and broke their neck, and they were paralyzed, or fall off a little footstool, or something like that. I mean, it could have happened any way. I mean, yeah. It's probably a lot easier, you know, it's probably a lot easier to happen in a wrestling ring, but, you know, it happens, things, things happen all the time, and, you, you know, you make the best of them and you deal with it. Everybody gets high, everybody gets low, and everyone's high.